Now I'm going to demonstrate a frequency sweep. Um, for this thing we're using a different piece of hardware here. This is just my test hardware I use uh, whenever I'm working with my uh, MATLAB code. It's just a little bit easier to use. And then what I just did was I found a video on YouTube that plays audio from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is the human audible spectrum. And then we're going to watch the frequency plots, which will be in the middle, just to watch the frequency sweep. I'm going to start at around 100 hertz. Uh, with my plots set up the way they are, it's hard to differentiate anything below that uh, due, to the, due to the axes that I'm using right now. You just might want to watch your speakers here because it can get pretty loud. Okay, so you saw some pretty good uh, frequency response there, all the way to probably about 18,000 hertz, and then it kind of just dropped off. Uh, I don't know if that's a limitation on my speakers or the uh, microphone itself, but that'll be good for what I need it for. Okay, one more test I want to show you is a uh, video I took. Uh, one of the first days you could go out on the lake without there being any ice anywhere. I just wanted to get some baseline data of what the lake sounded like without any watercraft moving around. However, when I got out there, I noticed there was a ski boat on the other end of the lake, kind of where my cursor is right now. They weren't moving, uh, they were just kind of drifting along. I assume they were fishing or something like that, uh, but their engine wasn't running. So I was able to get my baseline data. Then a few minutes later, I heard a loud rumbling coming from my speaker, my uh, guitar amp. And I looked up in time to see the, the boat started accelerating up to speed towards me. So I was also able to get some uh, good boat data as well, which I'm going to show you right now. Now just keep in mind, at the time I didn't have my uh, GUI ready, so all I was able to do was record this using my camera. So what I'm going to be doing here is going to be feeding the audio from my camera through my speakers to my test rig, which will then get fed into my computer to be analyzed by MATLAB. So there's going to be some loss in the quality of data I have here, but just as a simple test, it'll be good enough. Okay, I'm going to stop the video right there. So if we look at the middle plot, we have our frequency information. You can see right here we have a pretty big spike, which corresponds to about 800 hertz. And then there's some additional spikes further along in the frequency axis to about 5,000 hertz. Uh, one thing I've noticed with my frequency data is the lower frequencies are usually pretty noisy. 
And after I thought about that, it made sense because whether you're talking about radio waves or sound waves, uh, lower frequency waves travel or propagate easier, so you can expect to have more noise in the lower, lower bands. Okay, now let's look over here at the right, which is our Kepstrom data. Now initially I was looking at using the Kepstrom to determine the propeller shaft rate of the boats I was looking at. However, after further reading, I realized I wouldn't be able to use the Kepstrom for that. I did learn, though, that I could use the Kepstrom to determine any multipath propagation. Now as a radar guy, this is a little bit foreign to me, uh, since I could always assume that my radio waves were traveling in straight lines. Uh, but with sound waves, that's not the case. Uh, underwater, sound waves will bend depending on the water temperature, pressure, and salinity. And if you are, and if you're operating in a, an environment which is a shallow water environment, you have a pretty big potential for multipath propagation. The lake I'm going to be testing or am testing on is only about 30 feet deep and the hydrophone I'm using is only in about six feet of water so there's going to be a very big potential for multipath propagation. So with multipath what you're looking for uh, from what I understand is a series of harmonics and we have two of them right here. The first one is at 0 0.0148 seconds and the second one is at 0 0.028 seconds. So what this harmonic right here is telling you is that the there was a multipath propagation and it took an additional 0 0.0148 seconds to arrive at your receiver. That means it uh, traveled an additional 22 meters before reaching you. Now eventually I would like to uh, be able to determine the propeller shaft rate like what I talked about earlier and I have uh, been looking at a few methods for doing that so that will probably be in a uh, future video if I ever get that figured